Hi everybody, so I'm back and we're ready to delve into the prologue, A Mountain Range of Rubble. I'm in the same outfit that I was before because I'm filming a bunch of these the same day, so we're just gonna start. So, A Mountain Range of Rubble, in which our narrator introduces himself, the colors, and the book thief. Death and chocolate. First the colors then the humans. That's usually how I see things, or at least how I try. Here is a small fact. You are going to die. I am, in all truthfulness, attempting to be cheerful about this whole topic. The most people find themselves hindered in believing me, no matter my protestations. Please trust me. I most definitely can't be cheer can't be cheerful. Can be can be cheerful. I can be amiable, agreeable, a fable. That's and that's the only and that's only the A's. Don't ask me to be nice. Nice has nothing to do with me. Reaction to the aforementioned fact. Does this worry you? I urge you, don't be afraid. I'm nothing if not fair. Of course, an introduction, a beginning. Where are my manners? I could introduce myself properly, but it's not really necessary. You will know me well enough and soon enough, depending on a diverse range of variables. It suffices to say that at some point in time, I will be standing over you as genu as gen as genially as possible your soul will be in my arms a color will be a color will be perched on my shoulder i will carry you gently away at that moment you will be lying there i rarely find people standing up you will be caked in your own body There might be a discovery. A scream will dribble down the air. The only sound I'll hear after that will be my own breathing and the sound of the s and and the sound of the smell of my footsteps. That, that makes no sense. Okay, anyway. Um the question is what color will everything be at that moment when I come for you? what will what will the sky be saying personally i like a chocolate colored sky dark dark chocolate people say it suits me i do however try to enjoy every color i see the whole spectrum a billion or so flavors none of them quite the same and this and the sky to slowly s suck on it takes the edge off the stress. It helps me relax. A small theory. People observe the colors of a day only after its beginnings and ends. To ends, but to me, it's quite clear that a day merges through a multitude of shades and intonations with each passing moment. A single hour can consist of thousands of different colors. Waxy yellows, clouds, spat blues, murky darknesses. In my line of work, uh, in my line of work, I made it to a point to notice them. As I've been alluding to, 
My one saving grace is distraction. It keeps me sane. It helps me cope considering the length of time I've been performing this job. The trouble is who could ever replace me? Who could step in while I take a break in your stock standard resort style vac vacation destination, whether it be tropical or of the ski trip variety? The answer, of course, is nobody, which has promoted me to make a conscious, deliberate decision to make distraction my vacation. Needless to say, I vacation in increments, in colors. Still, it's possible that you might be asking, why does he even need a vacation? What does he need distraction from? Which brings me to my next point. It's the leftover humans, the survivors. They're the ones I can't stand to look at. Although on many occasions, I still fail. I deliberately seek out the colors to keep my mind off them. But n now and then, I witness the ones who are left behind, crumbling among the jigsaw puzzle of realization, despair, and surprise. They have punctured hearts. They have beaten, they have beaten lungs. Which in turn brings me to the subject I'm telling you about tonight, or today, or whatever the hour and color. It's the story of one of those perpetual survivors, an expert at being left behind. It's just a small story, really, um, about, among other things, a girl some words, an accordionist, a, a, a chord, accordionist, some fan, fanatical Germans, a Jewish fist fighter, and quite a lot of thievery. I saw the book Thief three times beside the railway line. First up is something white for the blinding kind. Oh, of the blinding kind. Some of you are most likely thinking that white is not really a color and all of that tired sort of nonsense. Well, I'm here to tell you that it is. White is without question a color and personally, I don't think you want to argue with me. A reassuring an announcement. Please be calm despite that previous threat. I am all bluster. I am not violent. I am not malicious. I am a result. Yes, it was white. It felt as though the whole globe was dressed in snow. Like it had pulled it on. Like it had pulled it on the way you pull on a sweater. Next to the train line, footprints go s sunken to their chins. Trees wore blankets of ice. As you might expect, Someone had died. They couldn't just leave him on the ground. For now, it wasn't such a problem, but very soon the track ahead would be cleared and the train would need to move on. There were two guards. There was one mother and her daughter, one corpse. The mother, the girl, and the corpse remained stubborn and silent. Well, what else do you want me to do? The guards were tall and short. The tall one also spoke first, though he was not in charge. 
he looked at the smaller, rounder, rounder one. The one with the juicy red face. Well, was the response. We can't just leave them like this, can we? The tall one was losing patience. Why not? And the smaller one damn near exploded. He looked up at the tall one's chin and cried. I'm pretty sure this is in German. Spinost do. Are you stupid? The abhorrence on his cheeks was growing thicker by the moment. His skin widened. Come on, he said, traipsing over the snow. We'll carry all three of them back on, back on if we have to. We'll notify the next stop. As for me, I had already made the most elementary of mistakes. I can't explain to you the severity of my self-disappointment. Originally, I'd done everything right. I studied the blinding white snow, snow sky who stood at the window of the moving train. I practically inhaled it, but still I wavered. I buckled. I became interested in the girl. Curiosity got the better of me, and I, res and I resigned myself to stay as long as my schedule allowed, and I watched. 23 minutes later, when the train was... 'd I climbed out with them. A small soul was in my arms. I stood a little to the right. The dynamic train in gu train guard duo made their way back to the mother, the girl and the s small mole corpse. I clearly remember that my breath was loud that day. I'm surprised the guards didn't notice me as they walked by. The world was sagging now under the weight of all that snow. Perhaps 10 meters to my left, the pale, empty, st stomached girl was standing frost-stricken. Her mouth jittered. Okay, this is like a really uncomfortable position to read in because I'm kneeling, so if you can't see me, I'm sorry. But I need to sit in a more comfortable position, okay. Her cold arms were folded. Tears were frozen to the book thief's face. The eclipse. Next is a signature, black to show the tiles of my Versat versatility, if you like. It was the darkest moment before the dawn. This time I had to come for a man of perhaps 24 years of age. It was a beautiful thing in some ways. The plane was still coughing. Okay, that's where we're going to end off. I'm very confused about some of the grammar in this book but anyway I'm kind of having a headache right now so that's going to be it for this video and I'm not going to film any more of these today but yeah so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please don't forget to rate comment and subscribe bye